Good day, I'm Tamara McHale and this is your GIS News for Monday, December 8. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller has called for greater dialogue and constructive engagement to secure progress and prosperity for the people of Jamaica, Cuba and the rest of the Caribbean. Mrs. Simpson-Miller was speaking in Havana on Sunday at an official ceremony to commemorate the 118th anniversary of the death of Cuban liberator and hero, Lieutenant General Antonio Maceo. She said Jamaica would continue to stand steadfast with Cuba in the struggle to attain peace, progress and sustainable development. The Prime Minister is also in Havana for the fifth summit of the heads of government of CARICOM and Cuba. At Monday's summit, she led discussions on a range of trade investment and cooperation issues between CARICOM countries and Cuba. The Prime Minister who left the island on Saturday returns to office on Tuesday, December 9. Some hotels are reporting high occupancy levels as the winter tourist season approaches. Tourism and Entertainment Minister Dr. Wicker McNeil says most of the hotels on the North Coast are solidly booked through to early January. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips says early estimates suggest an increase in stopover arrivals for the last quarter of 2014. October was 9 plus percent above last year October in increases. November running to date is about 10%. Above. If we keep that pace, then new records are going to be set. Local average daily rates for hotel booking costs, which signal the strength of the country's tourism brand, are up by 13 to 15 percent over last year. And the country is on track to record 3.5 million crews and stopover arrivals this year. There is no patient suspected of having the Ebola virus being treated at the Kingston Public Hospital or any other health facility. That assurance comes from the Southeast Regional Health Authority, SARA, in response to media reports. SARA says an individual was brought to KPH's Accident and Emergency Department for treatment after complaining of feeling ill. The patient had no travel history or any other contact with persons from any of the Ebola-affected countries. The health team donned protective gear and the patient was screened and taken to the isolation area in the hospital as is done routinely for anyone displaying symptoms similar to an infectious disease. The patient was treated and released. Jamaicans should soon find it easier to purchase homes after the Senate's passage of the Mortgage Insurance Act last Thursday. The legislation increases the rate of mortgage indemnity insurance that's granted for the appraised value of properties for sale. By moving the rate from 90 to 97 percent, potential mortgages will now only be required to put forward 3 percent of the price of a house as down payment, plus an estimated 2 percent closing cost. This compares to the current down payment requirement of 10 to 15 percent plus closing costs of approximately 2 percent, which is frankly out of reach of many Jamaicans. The legislation was passed in the House of Representatives on November 11 and will come into law after it has been signed by the Governor-General and gazetted. And finally, the West Milan Parish Council has received two fire trucks and two ambulances to improve emergency response in the parish. The vehicles were donated by the Government of Japan through grant funding of over 81,000 US dollars. Minister of Local Government and Community Development Noel R. Scott says the units will allow for more speedy response to fire and ambulance services within the parish. We are working steadily to increase our capabilities in terms of the fire management and prevention in Jamaica. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McHale. Thank you for watching.